Greetings from Episcopal Church of the Ascension. I'm Father Paul. I'm here with Mother Marcy, and we're ready for another five-minute Bible study. This week, we turn to the book of Esther, the seventh chapter, beginning at the first verse. It reads, So the king and Haman went in to drink with the queen, and the second, as they were drinking wine, the king said, What is it, Queen Esther? What is your petition, and what is your request? It shall be granted to you, even to half of my kingdom. She answered and said, If I have found favor with the king, let my life be granted me at my petition, and my people at my request. For we have been sold, and my people to be destroyed, plundered, and made slaves. And we and our children, male and female slaves, this has come to my knowledge. Our antagonist brings shame on the king's court. Then the king said, Who is this person that would dare to do this thing? Esther said, Our enemy is this evil man, Haman. At this, Haman was terrified in the presence of the king and queen. Mother Marcy, can you offer us a little background on this passage? Well, I love the character of Esther. You know, she is the original hashtag me too yes. move leader uh, movement um, in stating that she's going to stand up for herself and her rights and not just be systematically annihilated um, Esther comes to the throne as part of a beauty contest right she is actually part of the king's harem and because his first wife has made him mad uh, the king replaces his queen with Esther which paints him as a pretty formidable character, right? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, so he is the, the king of Persia, very wealthy, very powerful, and um, Esther never tells him that she is from Jewish heritage. It'd be very easy for her not to say anything and continue to live the life of, a, of uh, the wealthiest queen in the world, but, but she doesn't do this. Um, she follows the advice of her, uh, her cousin, Mordecai, who is a hated figure by one of the king's highest officials. And um, because of her courage, um, she finds, she puts into play a series of actions that basically cause a complete reversal. The evil Haman is hanged, uh, she inherits his house, and uh, this is where the Jewish Feast of Purim gets its start. So kind of that original, like, sacrificing or potentially sacrificing all the good and certainly there was a lot good promised to mm -hmm. Esther for the, the behalf of her people uh, all of her family friends relatives you know she, she'd arrived as it mm -hmm. were but she's laying it all on the line so it's it's, yeah. a big, it's a big story yeah and you know Haman had sent out a decree signed right. by the king I don't know that the king really knew what was he didn't read going it. on he he just signed it, it. And so it, the, the decree was that all Jews in the entire kingdom of Persia would be exterminated. So we're talking genocide. Yeah. And Esther puts her life on the line because you right. couldn't go to the king unless you were summoned. And if he rejected you, he had the right to kill you. Sure. So she puts her life on the line, but she waits. She doesn't go and throw herself at his feet and immediately tell him the evil that Haman has done. Instead... She, she thinks very carefully about things and plans a series of banquets with the king and with Haman. And it's at the second banquet that she says, this wicked Haman is my enemy. Let my life be given me, that and of my people. Um, so she asks for the opportunity to defend herself. I think this is a, a great lesson for us too in terms of uh, being deliberate and careful about the timing that we choose to confront things. I mean, even when we know something's wrong, something needs to be confronted, something needs to be said, mm -hmm. uh, having some forethought, prayerfully considering what does that look like? What will be the most effective means of actually touching the king's heart, right? Mm -hmm. And compelling him, you know, it's not just hitting it head on. And I think that's probably still true. F I mean, even when we're not dealing with kings who have the power to to kill us or cast us away like even a friend probably you know giving some thought about how we approach a sensitive issue or something mm -hmm. that's complex is important absolutely um, the message that stands out for me is that we have been sold 
in our women's Bible study on Mondays, 12 o'clock, little plug there, uh, we are talking about every woman in the Bible who speaks some words. And many of them are victims of society. They're, they're caught in circumstances that they cannot control. Either they are sold or they are given in marriage or they're even killed through no fault of their own. And so to me, Esther symbolizes every woman who has ever had to take a risk to better her situation, who has ever stood up and said, no more, this cannot happen anymore. Women like Harriet Tubman, Sojourner Truth, Rosa Parks, who refused to sit at the back of the bus and, and take what society was giving her um, sitting down. So, you know, Esther's a queen now. She's wealthy. She can do whatever she wants. She can ignore this whole situation. But instead, she takes matters into her own hands and faces death so that she can save her people. So there's probably a challenge for us in that. I mean, certainly many of us are experience great privilege on a, on a world scale. We have some duty, some obligation to speak up on behalf of the rest of God's people. Exactly. I mean, what are we willing to risk to save our community? What are we willing to risk to help others in our community? Are we willing to give our lives? That's something that bears a lot of thought in today's world. Well, it's a difficult uh, teaching and uh, a, a brave story to encourage us in it. Will you close us with a word of prayer? May you, my dear friends, seek the power of Almighty God to help yourselves, your families, and your communities. May God help us to have courage to risk everything to do the right thing. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thanks for joining us for this five-minute Bible study. We're the Episcopal Church of the Ascension, the church on the hill on Greenville Avenue.